As you guys know, I used to be a heavy investor in AT&T stock, mostly because of the dividend. It was yielding like seven to eight percent, but also because I felt that AT&T was a cash generating machine from their telecommunications and internet business, while also having some future growth potential in areas like video streaming, thanks to their Warner Media division that of course also owned HBO Max. However, when AT&T decided to cut their dividend and spin off Warner Media to form a new company that merged with Discovery and form Warner Brothers Discovery, I ended up selling completely out of my AT&T stock and just put the proceeds into more Disney stock and Verizon stock since Disney gave me more exposure to video streaming with Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, while Verizon also gave me a larger dividend as well. Since then though, the new Warner Brothers Discovery stock has continued to crash. It's currently down about 80% from its highs. And as such, I've been getting a ton of comments and questions asking me for my updated thoughts on the newly formed company and whether or not I would consider buying any stock myself as a long-term investment considering that it's crashed by so much. So let's go ahead and answer those questions right now by taking a closer look. All right, let's start by pulling up this stock chart here for a quick second, just so that we can have a little bit of a base to work with. And when looking at it, the chart for WBD stock is also going to include the history of Discovery stock before it merged with Warner Media, which we can see that it was in heavy decline over the past decade before it shot up around the start of last year to a high of almost $80 per share because of their new Discovery streaming service that was entering the red hot video streaming market being fueled by so many people staying home because of the pandemic. However, since peaking at those highs, the bubble really ended up bursting with the stock returning to its typical crashing ways. Now there was a slight bounce back at the start of, the, of uh, this year because of the merger with Warner Media that sent the stock back up to around $30, but ultimately it continued to crash, leaving it now down by over 80% from its highs to just around 13 bucks a share. So with a monumental crash like that, is this now a great buying opportunity in the stock? Well, I'll talk about the valuation in just a second, but in terms of the business, after the merger, you're now talking about a media giant here with two primary streaming services in Discovery Plus and HBO Max that together own rights to Discovery, HBO, CNN, Warner Brothers, HGTV, The Food Network, Sci-Fi, TLC, Cartoon Network, Cinemax, TNT and TBS, which also host the major sports leagues. There's Animal Planet. They have the entire DC universe, including Superman and Batman. They have all the rights to Harry Potter and even Game of Thrones, which just launched a new spin-off show called House of the Dragon that broke HBO's viewership record with almost 10 million viewers on the premiere. And there are more spin-offs to come from it as well. And there are countless more examples that I could give of popular movies and shows that now fuel their new streaming services. But even looking at just HBO Max alone, that service has already become the third largest in America, even ahead of Disney Plus, although Disney is way bigger internationally and will likely overtake them in the US soon too, but we'll come back to that in just a second. The point though is that HBO Max is a giant force to be reckoned with at over 70 million subs, and when you combine it with the subscribers from Discovery Plus as well, they now have almost 100 million in total. By the way, currently the two streaming services are separate, but they are planning to offer a merge ser service sometime next year that will combine the two. Anyway, going back to the stock for a second, thanks to that massive crash, WBD, that's the ticker symbol by the way, uh, is now trading significantly cheaper than most of their competition too. On a price to sales ratio, their PS is lower than one which is generally a good value just on its own. But when you look at some of the competitors, I mean, Apple, who owns Apple TV, it's much higher at more than six. Netflix is higher than three. Amazon with Prime Video is higher than two. Disney is higher than two. And Comcast, which owns the Peacock streaming service, is also above one. Only Paramount, who owns the Paramount Plus service, is lower than Warner Brothers Discovery at a PS ratio of just 0.4. But the same thing goes for their valuation based on profits as well, as their price to free cash flow is just about 10 
while most others are around 50 to 100% more expensive. Obviously, this bodes very well for Warner Brothers Discovery stock because not only do they have a massive amount of content and IP and brands that they can use to fuel their own streaming platforms, which they can also license out to other platforms and generate even more revenue from that. But because the stock has crashed by so much, it's left the valuation really cheap as well. What's not to like about that? Well, there are still a couple of major red flags that you should consider if you're thinking about investing in Warner Brothers Discovery stock. So let me just quickly cover what those concerns are, and then I'll give you my overall opinion and conclusion right after. And the first of these concerns is definitely going to be competition. This market is quickly becoming one of the most heavily saturated by some of the largest media companies in the entire world, many of which are not only larger with more cash to burn, but they're also much more diversified, which makes them way less risky. And that's really the reason why they have higher valuations because they do so much more than just video streaming. But just to give you some examples here of some of their competitors, I mean, for example, you've got Comcast Peacock Service with major shows like 30 Rock, Parks and Rec, Psych, The Office, and tons of hit movies. There's also Paramount Plus with SpongeBob, Nickelodeon, CBS, Comedy Central, MTV, BET, and also a ton of movies. There's Disney, who is my favorite of all of them with Marvel, Star Wars, and all the Fox, Disney, and Pixar properties that they own as well, which help them now surpass even Netflix in total subscribers worldwide at 221 million versus Netflix at 220 million. And there's even the massive Goliath in the room in Amazon, whose prime video service has already gained over 200 million subs thanks to their bundled prime membership. And all three of these are more than double the size of WBD with Amazon, Disney, and also Apple all being way more diversified than just video streaming like cloud computing, online shopping, theme parks, resorts, phones, and a ton of other things that they do. In fact, when we look at total sales, Amazon generates close to half a trillion dollars in sales while Warner Brothers Discovery is actually the smallest in the entire group at less than 20 billion. And the thing about some of these giants is that other parts of their business generate huge profits, which helps them subsidize the heavy losses from video streaming. But WBD doesn't really have quite the same luxury as most of their other businesses are extremely low growth or at even risk of declining. For example, networks is their most profitable segment, but their revenue only grew by 1% last quarter, while their profits actually sunk by over 10%. Studio was also flat year over year, and direct to consumer, which is the video streaming segment, uh, it actually lost them over half a billion dollars per quarter. So they really need to start turning things around if they want to be a successful company over the long term. Speaking of which, when I look at their business, I gotta be honest, I see a lot of confusion and volatility. Take the DC Universe, for example, which I think has all the potential in the world to be a massive success, just like Marvel has been for Disney. But instead, it's really turned into a complete mess with no clear direction. Not only was the Batwoman show canceled, but the Batgirl movie was also canceled at the last minute during post-production after they already spent almost $100 million on it. The Flash star is also being accused of assaulting a woman, although that movie hasn't been canceled yet, but it's not really looking too good at the moment. And they can't even seem to find a Batman actor that will stick around longer than a couple movies either. And it's not just DC. I mean, management has even canceled their own CNN Plus streaming service after already spending over $100 million to develop the platform. And they had over 500 employees working on it. Now, to be fair, I still believe that they will manage to turn things around because I think they have a lot of popular brands and IPs that they just need to market correctly. But in this horrible macro economy, their growth is just not as high as the competition, and that's becoming a bigger concern. Disney, for example, already had over 220 million subs and still managed to gain almost 15 million more last quarter, while WBD was less than half their size, and they couldn't even convince 2 million more to join their platforms. Now, analysts do think that next year will be better as the economy starts to recover, so they're projecting 7% revenue growth for the company, but that's still around the middle of the pack in terms of their competition, who, by the way, even the lower growth ones 
also make up for that lower growth by having larger profits and paying huge dividends like Paramounts, for example, at a 5% yield and Comcast at a 3.6% yield. Well, Warner Brothers Discovery doesn't pay any dividend and they're just kind of stuck in the middle of the road with, I would say, kind of mediocre growth overall. Not to mention the other major red flag, which is that they're now carrying a massive amount of debt, which was one of the reasons why Warner Media was spun off in the first place. But now WBD is stuck with about the same amount of current liabilities as current assets, plus another $51 billion of long-term debt to go along with it, which may not be easy to pay back considering that their profits have been struggling with each of the last four quarters, seeing a miss on the bottom line, which sent their earnings from positive over to negative. It's hard to give an overall conclusion here with something like Warner Brothers Discovery stock without sounding overly bearish or overly bullish, because the honest truth is that this is a stock that is really just kind of in the middle in terms of what they offer and in relation to their competitors. I personally feel that there are much better options in the broader market, but even just within video streaming, I think Amazon, Disney, and Apple are much larger, more diversified companies that I actually own myself. I own each of those three stocks. They give me direct exposure to video streaming and so many other areas too, many of which areas they dominate, and I think they're only going to get larger over time, and I feel really good invested in those stocks and I sleep well at night owning them. Whereas with something like Warner Brothers Discovery, I do think they have turnaround potential, but the business is a little bit of a mess and I feel like I would have to stay on top of that and spend a lot of time tracking them and making sure that they don't turn into an even bigger mess with everything that they've got going on. So I just feel like it would be a little bit of a headache to own that one too. And I feel like I don't personally need it because I already have exposure with other competitors. So for me, I just think there's better options out there, but it's not, a, I don't think it's a bad stock. I just think that it's not really worth owning and especially not for me personally. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say down below. Let me know down there, um, leave your thoughts on it and let me know if you own any of the stocks that we mentioned today. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll respond to your comments as well. But thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.